and a woman who were born and raised here in the low country and raised their families here. And this man was the equivalent, the low country equivalent of Dr. Martin Luther King. This, was, this man was the man when Dr. King, he was Dr. King's go-to guy here. And his name was Esau Jenkins and his wife's name was Janie, off of Johns Island. And my good friend and historian and author and educator and my good, did I say my good friend? Yes, you did. I'm gonna say it again. My good friend Damon Fordham is gonna take it over from here. Y'all right. listen up. Hey, wake up. All right. I don't mean that kind of work, I mean being up. All right, all right, that's more like it, that's more like it. Now, if y'all if y'all happy to be alive out here today, let me hear you out here. All right, that's more like it, that's more like it. Now, I'm about to tell you a story that's written in very few history books, aside from the one that I wrote a few years ago, but this is of extreme importance. On John's Island, July 4th, 1910, John's Island was basically considered a hopeless backwater. But there was born a man by the name of Mr. Esau Jenkins. And when he was going to school, he saw early on in his personal experience that the sharecroppers would pull the children out of the school to go pick in the fields. And he saw as a young child how wrong that was. You see, that's one of the things about state-sponsored poor education. It is designed to create a permanent class of cheap labor, and he understood that. But fortunately, although he had to quit school in the fourth grade in order to feed his family, he went to a Reverend G.C. Brown on Johns Island, who taught him all the other things that he needed to know, and he read books for the rest of his life. So much so that when he sold vegetables over at the market downtown, he knew that he had to trade with the Greek merchants so he learned how to speak Greek, so much so that when people saw him coming, they said, here comes the colored Greek. He took what opportunities he had and went forward with them. And when, in those days, if you were an African American, if you wanted to vote, you had to read the Constitution for the, for the satisfaction of the registrar. So he learned about the Constitution and taught it to people on John's Island, like Miss Alice Wine who did not know how to read or write, but so they got them to where they could memorize the Constitution and pass that test, and so thus they could vote. And then, in 1956, he ran for the school board when very few of us could vote. Why? Not so he could win, because he knew he wouldn't, but if he took that chance to come forward and run for the school board office, he knew the day would come when others would come running to the point where they would win. And along with that, he decided to teach people how to pool their resources, form the C&O Credit Union in 1966. And guess what? That business is still here today on Spring Street, long after he is gone. Now, that's a lot, now, now that is a lot of progress. Plus, he also had the Progressive Club that talked about advancement on John's Island. Now, keep in mind, this man only had a fourth grade education. But on April the 12th, 1962, right over here at Mother Emanuel AME Church, he was in the pulpit with Dr. Martin Luther King, who said these words about this man with a fourth grade education from Johns Island, South Carolina. Dr. King said, I admire those working in the community for freedom, like Brother Jenkins. And he also, in 1966, wrote his aphorisms, wise sayings with things like this. The person who knows everything has a lot to learn. Enthusiasm is the fuel that stokes the engine of success. Good ideas do not drop into closed minds. No man is too big to be kind or courteous, but some are too little. And the words that, that go across the bus, that he drove people to register to read and write and learn how to vote, that is today at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., his best known words, love is progress and hate is expensive. And he also told young people in 1972, he helped to form Hot Gap High School, which is now a middle school, which up until that time, African Americans in John's Island could only go past elementary school. He told the young people these words, get all the education you can, but do not think 
that you are better than your parents or those who may have not had as much education as you because you know something, because they may know something that you don't know. In other words, from the man with the highest PhD to the person in the street with no D at all, you can learn from somebody. And he died in a car crash at the age of 62 in 1972. But yet, he left behind this, edge, this legacy, and I'm here to tell you all this. Number one, in every community that had a sizable black community in those days, there was somebody like Dr. King. Here, it was Esau Jenkins. Now, there are people like me who dig in the libraries and go in the archives and bring this out to the general public via books, speeches, and YouTube and all that, but everybody's not gonna do that. So what you gotta do is go to these old folks who were there, talk to them, write down what they say so that their stories and message outlives them and can, and can inspire the next generation coming up tomorrow. And I want you also to consider this, young people, if Mr. Esau Jenkins did this with a fourth grade education, imagine what you can do today with what you know now. Thank you. One of the amazing things that Mr. Esau Jenkins did